OpenAI partners with Shutterstock, senators deal with the AI threat of China, and the OECD says a quarter of jobs or more are at the highest risk of disruption by AI. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five-ish minutes or less. Today, we kick off with a new report from the OECD. This is their annual employment report, and it found that 27% of jobs are at the highest level of risk from AI. Now, the OECD is the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. It's a 38-member transnational organization, and this survey was something they do every year. The OECD surveyed 5,300 professionals across 2,000 firms in seven countries, and the jobs that they said were at the highest risk were those who had at least 25 of the 100 skills and abilities that AI experts said could be easily automated away. They found that the jobs that have the highest risk of being automated away comprise 27% of employment in the OECD block. And making matters worse, this survey was collected before the rise of ChatGPT. Now, in addition to that headline number, the OECD employment report also looked into how companies in different industries were going to handle these changes. For example, when it came to finance, 64% of companies planned on retraining or upskilling their internal workers. 53% said that they would buy services from external companies. 35% that they would be hiring new workers. And 17% anticipated layoffs because of redundancies. Now, at the same time, there were some positive things here as well. 63% of respondents in the manufacturing and finance industries said that AI had improved their enjoyment of their job. This would follow along from the idea that AI helps automate away rote tasks that are frustrating but key parts of any given profession. 79% of finance workers and 80% of manufacturing workers said it had improved their performance. There were even mental health benefits with 54% in finance and 55% in manufacturing saying that it had improved their mental health. But there is still anxiety. 63% of professionals surveyed in finance are worried about job losses in the next 10 years due to AI, along with 57% of people in manufacturing. Next up today, the latest salvo in the battle around AI model training. Google has been hit by a class action lawsuit accusing it of stealing millions of users' data to train their various AI tools. Clarkson Law Firm brought the suit against Google, Alphabet, and its subsidiary DeepMind, and alleged that Google had, quote, been secretly stealing everything ever created and shared on the internet by hundreds of millions of Americans. Now, Google, for that part, don't seem particularly concerned. Their general counsel called the suit baseless and said, quote, We've been clear for years that we use data from public sources, like information published to the open web and public data sets, to train the AI models behind services like Google Translate responsibly and in line with our AI principles. Now, you'll remember that just last week, there was an updated privacy policy that said Google had access to even more publicly available information, so clearly these things are top of mind. Meanwhile, showing a slightly different path forward for how big models could access data, OpenAI and Shutterstock have come to an agreement to expand their deal around building generative AI tools. As part of the deal over the next six years, OpenAI will have access to Shutterstock data that includes everything from images to videos to music and its associated metadata. As part of the deal, Shutterstock will get what OpenAI calls priority access to their latest tech capabilities, and it sounds like they're trying to integrate those tools directly into Shutterstock's content library as well. Given how, given how litigious Getty Images has been around Stability AI's use of their images in the training of Stable Diffusion, this seems like a very different approach that OpenAI is going for. Next, we follow up from one of our big stories from yesterday. You'll remember that the White House held its first ever classified AI briefing for senators, and after that meeting, we got a lot of different responses. I think the ways that I would sum it up are a couple different parts. First, there's definitely a sense that this meeting reinforced the urgency of dealing with these issues. Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana said, AI has this extraordinary potential to make our lives better, if it doesn't kill us first. A second notable piece of the discourse coming out of this briefing is the extent to which people realize that there is an inherent tension, a line that they have to walk, between on the one hand wanting to provide some sort of guardrails and on the other, not wanting to overregulate an industry which is extremely geostrategically important. Marco Rubio from Florida said, One thing I'm certain of is, I know of no technological advancement in human history you've been able to roll back. It's going to happen. The question is how do we build guardrails and practices around it so that we can maximize its benefits and diminish its harm. At the same time, Rubio said, I just don't particularly know enough about AI yet to even understand what it is we're trying to regulate. There's probably some role to play in codifying how government uses it in the defense realms and so forth, but beyond that, I'm not prepared to give you an opinion because I think it's something we're still learning about. 
Now, that sentiment that we need to be careful with regulation, even though we know we need regulation, is something that wasn't just Republicans saying. In fact, Martin Henrik, Democrat from New Mexico, said, One of the interesting things about this space right now is it doesn't feel particularly partisan. So we have a moment we should take advantage of. And the last takeaway for me is that it is definitely clear who the big boogeyman is when it comes to AI, and it's China. For those of you who are watching this, you can see it on your screen right here. Fox News' headline is Senators Leave Classified AI Briefing Confident but Wary of Existential Threat Posed by China. Eric Schmidt, Republican from Missouri, described China as, quote, playing for keeps. Senator Joni Ernst from Iowa said, We should always be concerned about China always and strive to do anything better and faster than China. Tim Kaine from Virginia said, I think we're all very concerned about it. So given all this, when it comes to what Congress and the Senate are expected to actually do, it's not exactly clear yet, but Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, is trying to give some sense of it, saying, Our timetable in terms of producing legislation is not years, and not days and weeks, but months. We can't rush too fast, but we can't go slowly that either other governments that are authoritarian or bad actors who are private sector actors get ahead of us. So taking this all together, I think that we are very clearly going to hear a lot more about AI policy in the months to come. That's going to do it, however, for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you enjoyed it and you want to be part of a larger conversation, come check out the AI Breakdown Discord. The link is bit.ly slash AI Breakdown, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you there. For now, thanks for watching or listening, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.